Hey everyone, right now we are in Washington State coming to check out some railroad tunnels. To my left, if you see over on the other canyon wall, that flat area, that's where the railroad used to be. It shut down in 1987. The railroad tunnels were built in 1909 or around there. We're gonna try to find at least a couple of them out here. By the looks of it, the way it's marked, that might be a snowmobile trail in the winter time or something similar. We can't walk on it, but maybe in the future it'd be a good idea to get something like a mini bike that I could throw on the vehicle to be able to more easily go down these type of trails. It's just not feasible to do walking and there's so many miles worth of this abandoned railroad. But we're gonna try to stop at some interesting things that are accessible from the roadway. All right, everyone, so right now going around this next corner, I can see where the railroad used to go. It's now just a dirt trail leading right up to this roadway. But coming around this corner, when I can see it, it looks more like engineered fill. So they may have just put the road here with no tunnel blocking it, but there might be a tunnel here. I'm gonna pull over and go down. Yeah, this looks all abandoned. It actually kind of looks like pavement. It probably isn't the ground out here because it's so dry, it just cracks and plants can only grow in the cracks. So it ends up looking like pavement. So shut the vehicle off and we're gonna go for a little hike down the hill. Gotta be careful. I've already seen one poisonous snake today. All right, everyone. So yes, I did just stop here. And yes, this is all engineered fill. There never was a tunnel here. It was just part of the hill. No obstruction, but when they built the road, they just filled it in because the railroad was already gone. I see some kind of foundation there, and I also see a gate with access right here. Probably should have just driven down there. There's no sign preventing it. The only sign I can see says right there, no hunting without permission. So now on the other side, this is what we first drove in on. Seeing something like this would usually indicate a tunnel, but there is no tunnel anymore. Gone without a trace. But this flat area used to be a railroad track. You hear that noise there? That PVC pipe's making a pretty cool noise against the telephone pole. hike down here now. It's very, very dusty and dirty here. I see other footprints. Someone else recently came here. Or I guess it could have been some animal. That looks like it is actually pavement, which is weird because it lines up perfectly with the old railroad maps. All right, everyone, now we're driving back the other way. That is paved, so it looks like they used it as a roadway for a little while after the railroad. But the way it's flattened out, that had to have been the railroad. They never would have made it that flat just for a vehicle. Train needs that, and that cost so many million times more to do it. All right, here we are, and this should be the entrance to another railroad tunnel. I believe we just went over the portal to it. So now we gotta find somewhere to park. All right, everyone, excuse the wind. I'm walking right here on a paved road that just ends. There must have been a bridge here or something at some point well-traveled trail here going down to the tunnel. A couple of them. There's one going here and one going this way. I'm going to try this one first going towards it, but it may just be a lookout at the tunnel. Yes, exactly what I thought. It's pretty steep right here, so we got to go the other way, which is a nice gradual way down. 
All right, everyone, we're going to make our way down here. It's a nice gradual hill. You can tell a lot of other people go down here. Nothing around here except just hay field after hay field. The only green stuff you can see is being watered. If you look at satellite maps, it's all round crop circles from the irrigation equipment. This sand is extremely dry, as you can see. You don't even have to try to make dust, just stepping into it makes little puffs. So here we are on the railroad. There's nothing here. They tore up all the ties. They tore up all the rail. The only thing left is ballast, and it's very, very smooth. Very easy to walk on. Would not be a great place to bicycle. It would be pretty bumpy, unless you go pretty slow. Mountain bike would probably do okay. There's a truck up there bringing some kind of crops. All day I've been seeing onion trucks and potato trucks around the area. They're carrying loads that are way overloaded, falling out. I see a lot of potatoes and onions on the side of the road. This is kind of cool. Look at all this volcanic rock. Most of it in the area is volcanic rock. You can see, look at all this stuff that's fallen here since the railroad was abandoned. So many boulders that would have fallen onto the tracks. Now, this tunnel up here looks pretty amazing. It might just be an optical illusion, but it kind of looks like there's smog coming out of it. This tunnel's not supposed to be that long. It's supposed to be only a, about 2,000 feet. Oh, now, we, there we go. Now I can perfectly see through to the other end. So yeah, this is very believable. This train track's only been abandoned for 35 years. It's not in that bad of condition. And this type of area, it really can't grow in with anything other than grass. Trees don't exist out here unless they're right next to a river or they're being watered. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I just got a blast of freezing cold air. Today is going to be about 85 degrees with an overnight low of 42. It's already getting up there towards the high point of the day. So this feels very refreshing as we approach. And there's a bunch more rocks that have fallen down here. Really not that much graffiti. And it looks like the graffiti artists who did come out here were pretty prepared to do this. See, when they do stuff like that, they typically need to bring down ladders, rollers, a selection of paint. I came across them doing that once before in the tunnel. It was done very professionally. So it looks like it's pretty dry in here. Pretty dry tunnel. Doesn't rain out here that often in Washington state. At least not this part of the state. We're not near the coast. It's very cold in here. Smells a bit dusty. Got numerous tumbleweeds. And this is pretty cool. See the concrete there? This is for water to flow right out of it into the drainage ditch. We really did not even have to bring camera lights. See the walls are still covered in soot from the coal burning trains that went through this most of its life. Still perfectly graded. Take a look at all those spider webs. You got this huge spider web across the whole tumbleweed. 
This is the first train tunnel I've ever seen with this really nice elevated concrete platform with the ballast on top of it. It's so refreshing in here. Time to turn on another camera light. That helped a lot. So what I meant was, it, it's not necessary to really walk through it as far as the camera light. But it is if you want to see what's on the walls and stuff. It's a good idea to check for snakes. Now that we're actually in the tunnel, now it's starting to seem big. Nothing but tumbleweeds in here. Since we're in the middle of nowhere, that's what really kept the graffiti down. Most train tunnels I've explored in the past, you wouldn't be able to find an inch of extra space on the wall. Really not an echoey tunnel. Down here is pretty damp. Water recently was in this part of the tunnel. Now that we're much deeper in the, to the ground. Here's what it looks like in the tunnel. We're about one third of the way through. It's pretty dark in here. But if you're actually in here, you can see the ground enough, and it being so flat, there's really minimal tripping hazard. But we better keep the lights on as far as looking out for dangers like snakes. Although I can't see why one would really be in here on a day like this, where it's much colder in the tunnel. What I'm finding in here pretty cool is this tunnel has a bunch of weep holes for water and they're square. You can still see the wood in there, like this one right here. See the piece of wood has actually been pulled out by someone and here we are, a weep hole. There's a lot of poops in there from some type of animal. Let's zoom in a bit. Lots of poop in there from something. Yep, here's another one of them. Weep holes. It looks like they actually left a pretty hollow spot behind the wall, if you look in there. Seems like right behind the concrete is a good hollow spot where water can come out. Did not expect to see this in here. A huge vent. Is it a vent? It looks like this may have been the vent at some point. Put my feet up on there. Because if you look inside here, there's a whole bunch of wood, which you can see has suffered fire damage. Maybe someone in here in the middle of the night tried to make this into a giant fireplace. There's wood in here lining the ceiling. But this may have been a vent going up in the middle here for ventilation. It's one really heavy vent. And it looks like you would disconnect this one piece if you wanted to crawl inside it. There's some other various things. There's a metal pail with concrete in it and a bar sticking out. It's 
pretty dry in here. There's no dripping water at all. Looks like we came at the right time. I'm going to see if I can look up in here any better if I'm down low. All right, just disconnected the camera so I can stick it through here without the tripod. What do we see up in here? Does it go up like a vent? Not that I can see. I don't really see it going up anywhere. It does not look like a shaft. No, it looks like right above that wooden planks, it stops. I just found some remnants of another explorer. They forgot their crackers. And a mouse, nothing found it yet. All right, everyone. I'd say we're about two thirds of the way through the tunnel now. And we came up to another one of these giant grates on the wall. All right, this is a little more exciting than this one. Let me detach the camera again. All right, everyone, now we're gonna try putting the camera light right through here. Cause this one looks like it actually has a shaft behind the wall where people could have walked. Yeah, you see that? It looks like there used to be a passageway behind the wall in here. Because if I stick my light in there, it is fairly collapsed as you can see the rocks in there, but it seems to go pretty far. It does not go in the other direction. Now this one, um, it looks like there also is empty space, a good amount of it in here. I can't really fit my head through the bars to get the best angle. Yeah, that's about the best I'm going to be able to see in there. Now we got another third of the way out. And at this point, the tunnel's actually starting to get warm because there's a constant air current coming from this way. So everyone, what do you think about those vents that we saw back there on the walls? At first, I was kind of surprised to see them because it's such a short tunnel. There typically wouldn't be an air escape to pump out exhaust, and I still do not think that's what that is. To me, it looks like I showed the bolts. One of the bars comes off that grill, so you can climb into there, and it looks like there may have been a passageway behind the wall. May it have been to collect water before it got there and release it into the drainage ditch of the tunnel? Possibly. Possibly to do some maintenance. Why doesn't the other wall have it? Leave in the description what you may think of that. I really don't know. Or I mean, leave in the comments what you may think of that because I'm not sure what to think. Now that we're coming to the end where all the wind is blowing in, the entire drainage ditch is full of tumbleweeds. And some of these things are just massive. Take a look at this one. Go here and pick it up. These are actually kind of fun to throw around. It's huge. Massive tumbleweed. Look at the dust that just came off that thing. Boom. It's the size of a giant beach ball. There's another perfect one. Perfectly round tumbleweed with like a three foot diameter. Now we're starting to come into the graffiti area again. Huge amount of tumbleweeds. And can you see all the spider webs? There's probably many hundreds of spider webs all over these tumbleweeds. 
because the wind in here is blowing all the bugs straight in there. Perfect spots for a spider. That's why we see spiders so often inside culvert pipes. Yes, look at the spider webs. They're all over the floor too. Just hundreds and hundreds of spider webs. It's becoming even more windy now that we're about to leave. And just look down at the spider webs. See them flapping in the wind like tarps? Can't believe the spider webs. I've never seen so many on the ground like this. These western spiders build absolutely everywhere. I've been seeing some culvert pipes where every single rib of the culvert is like flattened out because there's so many spider webs built between them. And now we're out on the other side and the sun is shining. We're out. Can't believe these tunnels that took so long to build. They're not even stamped with the dates. Someone else put their mark up there. Let's just see what it looks like around this corner before we come back out to the vehicle and try to find another tunnel further down the system. Now this looks like some teeth, maybe from a deer. I saw a gigantic cow skeleton earlier. That may have been cow too, I'm not really sure. Beautiful scenery coming out of here. This is such a pretty area. All the grass covered hills. It'd be really nice to come out here sometime during the rainy spring when all these hills are bright green. So this is that same raised platform I showed at the beginning of the video. The road is currently up there. Where I was driving alongside is probably another two miles ahead. This is called the Columbia Plateau Trail. It's open to recreation. We're going to try going in the opposite direction. And we're going to see if we can find another tunnel. At the beginning, when I was showing that paved road that used to be railroad tracks, that may not have been necessarily abandoned the same time as this. Couldn't really find any information on that. I'm walking right now because I see this huge hole right here. It has no way out. So I'm seeing if there's possibly a culvert pipe left over from the old railroad. So water could get out of here. I'm trying to avoid walking in the grass as much as possible because of the rattlesnakes. When I do know I have to go in grass, I typically wear my fishing waders, just in case. Some animals took a big poop here, and see how it's all flat? Looks like the animal's also laying down here for a while. So I'm not seeing any kind of culvert pipe. It may have just been designed so it could seep through the rocks, whatever little water did go in here. I do see the road, they're sending all the water down here when it does rain. Someone was also hunting out here. 280 Remington. No, don't see any culvert pipe leaving either. Looking at the terrain around here, I feel like these days 
it would be far less likely they would ever build a tunnel like this. You see, there's not much mountain on top of it. I feel like they would have just carved a canyon through the mountain there and then built a bridge for the one road that crosses over it. Take a look at this big beetle here I just found on the side of the railroad. Look, he looks like he's looking for food. He's trying to nibble this plant. Ah, oh, the beetle just spotted me recording him. He's now spooked until I go away. I just found another friend over here. Oh, and another one. When you look really closely, there's lots of creatures here. There we got a moth. And over here is a big old caterpillar. See him right there nibbling on the end of that plant. Very hungry, hungry caterpillar. Here's another close-up view of that moth. All right, everyone. Now we're going to go in, go back through this tunnel once again. A lot of spiders down there. But the tumbleweeds look fantastic from the inside. With that light right behind us from the sun, the angle of these tumbleweeds just looks amazing. And they're so fun to pick up and just throw them. That's so like a giant beach ball. things are very prickly. I got a bunch of things stuck in my hand from it. But they're so light and the wind in here, if it was just a little bit more, it'd be so fun to be throwing these things in here. It'd be good to come in here during a storm. That would be when you have a lot of fun. I have a bunch of these tiny little things I gotta pull out of my hand. It's not as bad as prickers. There's some really small ones that kind of like a cactus and just have to deal with it until they fall out. Here we are coming up upon another big tumbleweed. These things are so fun to kick. If you don't get your foot stuck in it, you gotta kick it right from the base perfectly to get it to move like that. Here we are everyone coming back to this grate on the wall. Here we are taking one more look inside that Supposed tunnel behind the wall it goes pretty far. Look up in the ceiling. All right, everyone, while driving around looking for more tunnels, we haven't found them yet. There's no signal out here. We can't really do anything about that, but there's a really old abandoned bus here covered in graffiti that looks pretty cool. Then I'm going to try to make my way through these bushes. There's actually another driveway I'll probably pull in. There's an abandoned house right there, and it says for sale. So let's go look at it. All right, here we are at an abandoned bus. 
Looks pretty cool, all covered in graffiti. It's awesome. The wheel's all flat, it's semi-sunk into the ground. This door actually just blew open since we've been standing here. Pretty awesome. Look at this old bus. All right, I guess it's time to hop aboard. Still stable. You can tell a lot of people come in here. Every inch of this bus is covered in graffiti. Looks like one of the old heating registers. Wow, the bus is back then at real short ceilings. Wow, the engine's actually still in here. The engine block at least. Everything else looks like it's been stripped off. Looks like at one point a bird's nest was in here. Let's go back up to the front. Everything's gone except the steering column, the brake pedal. Everything's seized up, nothing's gonna work anymore. Oh, this actually moves around a bunch. Feels like it's actually still attached and doing something. I want to kind of look underneath. Yeah, this is moving something way back here. What's it moving? Kind of scared looking under here. Here's another view of the engine. Take a look at this little army guy right here. All right, so I finally figured out why I was hearing something in the back. So, when I was moving the shifter, which is right here, it's attached to this bar going all the way in the back to the transmission. Everything's still connected. It's amazing nothing's broken or seized up. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's amazing that this thing still shifts freely. Yeah, that's a little too loose. It might not actually be connected to the transmission anymore. underneath again oh it's still leaking motor oil see that puddle on the ground let's crawl under here a little more all right we're gonna figure out what this is doing exactly all right, move it back and forth. All right, see it? Is that as far as it goes? All right, keep doing it.
see the flywheels budging a little bit. All right, let's look on the other side if we can see that doing anything. Keep it going. Oh, then we got a better view on this side. Yeah, everything's still connected. Can any mechanics in the comments tell me what I'm seeing going on here? I just realized how many birds nests are up here. Let's sit down and try to drive this thing. <laughs> Here's all these bird nests I was talking about. Look at that, in the rusting roof. So many birds nests. There's even a feather in this one. Let's see if we can pull that out. Not much left of it. Nah. All right, that was a pretty cool bus. Now, right next door, we're gonna go visit an abandoned house for sale and see if there's anything interesting inside. So the driveway is right here which I feel like is the best place to enter it because you don't know what could be in that tall grass. Rather not go down this driveway, who knows what could be in there. I'm gonna walk on foot. So I still got my headlamp on from the tunnel because there is a door wide open on this place. There's also half of a double wide mo mobile home and we are not going to go near that that has no trespassing signs on it but this says for sale so looks like any potential bu potential buyer can just go up to it and there used to be something here check it out it says right on the road motel and rv park so this is probably the remnants of a old motel and check this out, this may have been part of a motel. This looks more of a storage building of anything. Oh, now I see what this building is. This was for the RVers. It's just a bunch of bathrooms, see? There's a shower, an old toilet, a bunch of poop from wild animals. There's even the newer energy efficient curly bulbs in here. Shower doesn't even look that bad. Got the rack on the wall to jam the towels in, the face cloths. You can see right here there was most likely a bird's nest. A uh, cliff swallow. Now the next room right here. Don't know if there was a shower in here, but that toilet's still attached to the floor. Got a bunch of sinks. And these are nice sinks, nice vintage sinks. I would love to have one of those at home just for the novelty, nostalgic look of them. You can see someone took a poop in here not too long ago. How old are the toilets? There's a stamp there from 92, but typically you wanna look at the tank lid. Did the other one have a lid by any chance? Yes, it does. I'm a little bit afraid to open this thing. There's a lot of poop in there, too. So dusty. Let's try to get this off. Oh, there's so many spider webs. Did you hear that noise it made when I opened it? It looks like July 16th, 1973. 
Or is that 23? I think it's 73, but then again... No, there it is. July 1956. So it looks like the end of this stamp just got cut off. Because you see how it's deep here? The 56 just didn't get stamped into it. All right. Yeah, typically you look on the inside of the cover. But they did a horrible job stamping that. The dust layer in there is huge. Because just looking at the area, I can see how they would get big dust storms. So maybe this was the office of the building. Take a look at a bird's nest here. Another bird's nest. Let's go inside. This is kind of scary. Whoa, something's in here. I just heard a chirp. Or maybe that was a squeak of a mouse. There's a bunch of beer cans in here. Hot water heater for the rooms next door. Washing machine hose. There's a bunch of random stuff in here. Interesting little building. Ton of water damage in that back corner. From the leaking roof. And over here, looks like where the motel most likely would have been. This would have been the basement or maybe just the crawl space beneath it. Here's a couple stainless steel sinks left over. It's a bunch of nails and other rubble. By the looks of it, those were just thrown in the hole afterwards. The building appears to have burned down. You see all this ash. All the electrical boxes are burnt, extremely rusted. Yes, it looks like the motel has burned down. And that may have been dumped here by some somebody who did a home project and just didn't want to pay to have it properly disposed of. You see the bus over here on the distance. It's really only a couple hundred feet in front of me. Yep, this whole motel burned down. All right, everyone, so that was a cool explore of that old RV park and motel. So that right there, I believe, was the office. That was right there next to those two rooms for the RVers to shower. That's for people who potentially did not have water hookups. So that building was from the 50s, it appears. And somebody left a whole bunch of containers of motor oil right there where I parked. Without even covers, those are going to end up getting tipped over and spilled. You know, most stores, Walmarts, auto stores, well, they'll take your used motor oil for free. There's no reason to dump it. While going through this small town in Washington, still quite a few people live here, but almost every single business is abandoned and starting to crumble, falling apart. Just looks like a not enough people to support it. What I think is really cool, check out this building right here. This old Chevy building. It looks really cool. Isn't that building cool? Look at the doors where you would have driven your car in to get worked on. And there's numerous other businesses here, like this place right here. Sunny's Great Food for sale. That looks like it went out of business very recently. Paint's not even chipping like the rest of these strips. And that building right there, Central Lodge. But the majority of the houses are still lived in, it looks like. It's kind of cool driving through these old run-down towns. It's a blast from the past, the buildings, especially out here where they hold up much longer without maintenance. Very dry out. So now we're driving down the road, and to my left over on that ledge are the railroad tracks. There's numerous underpasses. The tracks still have open clearance. Nothing's blocking them. None of the bridges are missing. Certain parts are only open to walking. No motorized vehicles. But other places, it looks like you can just drive down it. 
but it's not wide enough to turn around if you had to. All right, everyone, here we are a couple miles up the railroad tracks. It's very flat around here. And it looks like there was buildings here right next to the railroad track. Maybe a train station, maybe loading docks. And there's this old abandoned building next to this telephone pole. Used to have electrical service. All covered in graffiti. What's it say on the wall in here? Someone was hanging out. Got a lot of food wrappers. What's this say on the wall? Can I zoom in enough? So do you think this was part of the railroad? No, it was definitely not part of the railroad. It was part of trucking. I'm just noticing now that there's a weight station out here. Yep. This is a weight station. Someone shot a bunch of bullet holes through the window there. Oh, look, the scale, it's still, it's not seized up. See it? It's swaying around as I'm walking on it. These scales, some of them are extremely sensitive. I remember as a young child, I one time went out to one of these with my bicycle after hours and they had the thing still active it said exactly what I weighed I was surprised that it didn't have a minimum weight so yeah a bunch of foundations probably were used with the railroad but I guess they could have also been loaded into trucks they're all round except the one on the end so they were probably most likely silos yep see the metal walls you can see what a cutting torch torched them right off to the scrapyard there's the railroad tracks so there's a gate there you're not allowed on that part but this part here oh there is another gate didn't see that from the road What's this thing down here at the end? Let's check that out. Here's some cool alien drawings on this one. And some mountains and trees. I see a giant motor on both of these. coming back through the tiny town where we parked to explore the first tunnel. The parking and access is right here off to the left. And now we're going to continue in this opposite direction and look for tunnels. It got way too flat the other way and as far as satellite images show, there's nothing as far as the eye can see. But there are supposedly other tunnels because this is numbered uh, tunnel 18 so we should be looking for other tunnels maybe in the other direction. Alright, a few miles ahead, here we are still next to the tracks that are way up there on that flat ledge. We're probably a good hundred feet below them. Alright everyone, we just turned around. There is another tunnel here. You can see the ledge up to my left. I'm going to turn around, show you guys the tunnel, and then we're going to try to find a good way to get up there. There is a barbed wire fence here, but I'm hoping... Yeah, I just found a spot that where the fence is down. All right. All right, everyone. I just pulled over on the side of the road, and here we are up in the hill. See that tunnel? We're going to try to find a way to get up there. 
All right, so first we're gonna try to see where this thing comes out. If that's less accessible, we'll come back here and we'll go through the area where the fence is broken. Don't see any no trespassing signs or anything. I know the railroad up there is open to recreation. I just don't see any way to easily get up there without just walking through this field. Look at these rock formations right there. Those are pretty cool looking. All right, everyone, we found it on this side. This shelf is really high up for the railroad. We're seeing if we can find any closer way up. There is a dirt road here. That might be our way up there closer to it, unless it's gated or there's a sign saying we can't do it. We're gonna flip around and try it. Here we are at a hydroelectric dam. I guess we're gonna turn around in the dam's parking lot. All right, just flipped around. Now the railroad is well up there above us, say a good 150 feet. So now I just turned around and there is one road going up there. I don't know if we're able to take it or not, but regardless, we'll park at the end of it. Because I know we are allowed on the train tracks. There's the road right here. Doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty steep, but if it gets too bad, we'll just set off on foot. These tumbleweeds are actually pretty crunchy running them over. We're stirring up quite the dust storm back there. Driving through the fence. Uh, this is so steep. I might turn around here. Yeah, there's no way I'm making it up there. Look how deep those ruts are. Let's see, is there anywhere I can park? I'm gonna try going up this road. But that other one's a no-go for me. Ruts are too deep, I'll get stuck. Got a beautiful view of the hydro dam. Yes, I think we're gonna park right here. It's not that big of a walk up to the train tracks, and there's plenty of room for other people to park here. Yep, we're parking here. Wow, what a beautiful view of this hydroelectric dam. And there's the railroad right up there. You can see it. There is another barbed wire fence up there. We're gonna go ahead and walk back to the road we couldn't get up, or just simply walk up this to get to the railroad tunnel. All right, we're gonna walk down here and up that really steep road. I'm actually a little nervous now because it actually smells like fire up here and there is a bunch of smog from it. So there is a grass fire somewhere. If I start smelling it stronger, I'm gonna have to get out of here. That's why you never wanna park on the grass. Hot parts of the vehicle can start grass fires. We already saw one grass fire and smelled multiple ones. All right, so here we are, yeah, I definitely wasn't going to take the vehicle up this because I could see it getting stuck. Yeah, this is a very steep incline. I'd say it's maybe 35% even. And I see a lot of other footprints. It looks like a lot of other people had the same idea not to drive up this. Maybe sometime if I get a more rugged vehicle, I would try to go up this. Hey, there's the train tunnel. We can finally see it. And that's what we're walking to. See what I mean in the distance? There's such a haze. I don't smell it now, but a few minutes ago, the smell of smoke was pretty strong. And last night, sleeping at a nearby Walmart, camping out in the parking lot, it smelled like smoke very strongly, and you could see heavy haze in all the parking lot lights. Yesterday, 
driving up through Oregon, there was so much smoke everywhere. The vehicle actually smelled like it for hours. Had to put the windows down a long time to get rid of that. Yeah, it looks like the farmers haven't used these fields in a while. Or maybe this was just to keep stray cows off the railroad tracks. This fence is all destroyed, except where the metal T-posts are. There was definitely a grassland fire going through here. The gate is all destroyed by fire. That looks like a trail going to the tunnel. But here is actual access. Okay, I feel a lot better now. We're fine where we parked. This is actually access for the tunnel. Authorized vehicles only, but we're good on foot. Real nice. Now this one's much deeper in the mountain. Much bigger too. And I looks like it might actually go around a corner. It might not be a straight tunnel like the first one. And check out this awesome shelf. We'll try to follow it even further and look for more tunnels later on. That's such a great view up here. Nothing but grassy hills and mountains as far as the eye can see. And this looks like another pasture back here at one time. A lot of these pastures, there's no animals in them anymore. About to start walking down to the tunnel now. No, I can already see this is yet again another straight tunnel. So they have a corner leading into it and a corner leading out the other side. There is no twist inside it at all. Take a look at that very, very secluded farmhouse. So rural. That might be a barn, but it looks like a house to me, having windows and all. Here's another deep crevice. I wonder if there's any sort of culvert pipe or not. It is getting pretty hot out here. I do actually love the temperature fluctuations this kind of terrain has. Because typically at home when it's this hot out, it usually doesn't get down cold enough to be sleeping nicely. But it gets down into the 40s around here at night. That's perfect for sleeping. So here's a crevice, and it looks like water sometimes comes through here. I see a lot of burnt fence posts, a couple burnt railroad ties. So a grass fire definitely ripped through here at some point. Yet again, I'm not seeing a culvert, but there has to be. You see where water sometimes goes. And then again, these, this could have been ancient. I guess this, these hills could have technically been formed hundreds of years ago. Yeah, I'm not seeing any pipes here. I do see a lot of 55 gallon barrels down there that the railroad company probably tossed at some point. I do see a, a ditch right there to catch water running down the hill. And you see it goes off with erosion control so if there is a heavy rain, it doesn't destroy the whole hill. They probably engineered this one where it can seep through the hill if need be without a pipe. And this one looks like it's actually stamped. From here, it looks like 1917. But we'll get a closer look in a moment. See this flattened out area? What do you think that used to be? It looks like that might be irrigation. I think I might take a little walk down there right now and then I can rest in the nice cold tunnel. There might be a culvert here. Or is that an old ancient road? Yes, it does say 1917. It also says tunnel 16. I hear some birds in there. This looks like a trail for animals going right underneath that fence. It says no trespassing. 
but I am curious to see if there's a culvert there. The railroad's property goes up to that fence, so I'm good. Just gotta look for a good place to go down and check for rattlesnakes as I go. But I think as I start walking, I'm gonna loosen up enough little pebbles and set them on a roll that it would make any snake show itself. The sun is really hot here beating down. I don't think I have to go down there all the way. I just need to know if there's a pipe or not. Doesn't look like it to me. It didn't look like it from above. Gotta grab onto that post. Without falling into the barbed wire. Here's some birds. No, there is no pipe there at all. It does look like it was designed for water though. It's always way better going up these than down. At least if you fall, you can just catch yourself on all fours. Now we're about to enter the tunnel. It's walking on this little animal trail. We're about to enter inside now where it's finally much cooler. All right, here we go, entering the tunnel. TMH 41, it says right there on the edge. This tunnel doesn't appear to have the drainage ditches on the side. If we look backwards towards the sun, it's got all of those spider webs again. If you look carefully, they're all flapping like a tarp. I wonder if this tunnel's gonna have any of those grates on the side. Now this tunnel seems to have a water line in it. Seems to have a good amount of water damage to the bottom also. And it's not running down the wall. What do you think? Is that just mineral buildup? Or is it rushing water at some point coming through here? These tunnels are in perfect condition. By all the dust in here, yeah, this was certainly sitting in water at some point. Looks like this tunnel doesn't have the best drainage. Yeah, look, it's still moist in here. Water table's really not that far down. We didn't get the air conditioning blast like we got at the first tunnel, but we'll get it on the way back because we just entered the end that's sucking in the air. Down here it should be pretty cool. And we'll get to see where we were thinking about coming up to it. I guess it's probably because of all this ballast in here. These tunnels have the worst echo I've ever heard of any train tunnel. There is still a good amount of railroad remnants in here. Look at that. All right, everyone, we just came across one of these metal grates. And probably like that other tunnel, we'll probably find another one. Oh, look, there are some railroad ties in here. But what do we think about this grate? All right, everyone, we're going to stick the camera into this scary hole. Yeah, look, just like the other ones. We have a tunnel here going back behind the wall, but this tunnel is not behind the immediate concrete like before. That's a good sized tunnel there. I wish there was a way inside. There's not. You'd have to remove these special bolts. Yeah, take a look at that. I've never seen anything like that. Special tool to zip that off. 
And you see, that's the only rung that has an internal bracket because it's meant to be removed so you can go in there. I can't believe no vandal or kid has opened up any of these things yet. All right, everyone. So I was thinking maybe this grate wasn't here when the railroad was active. It's going through my mind that this could have been something totally different. Maybe they put this grate up when this became a recreation trail just because it's a hazard of collapsing. I'm thinking that maybe right around that corner I can't see, or in the other ones behind the wood, maybe it doesn't go far, maybe it just ends. Maybe that wood was there to keep rocks from falling on workers. I believe this may have been a spot for workers to step out of the way of a train. Most tunnels have them, they're usually only the size of a doorway, but that might be the case. They may have put these grills up when it became a recreation trail. That is a possibility. And they have the emergency bar that can be removed just in case you had to get in there very quickly for some reason. Because just looking at them, these things don't really look vintage to me. They look kind of modern the way they're welded together and created. And if for whatever reason that does go pretty far, I don't think this is the case at all, but I have seen railroad tunnels and even mines completely blocked off with similar grates so bats can go in there and have a good nesting place without you disturbing them while stopping you from getting hurt in there and also allowing gases to escape. I don't think that's the reason. I think this is just to stop someone from going in there into a potential collapse. I do believe this was for workers to get out of the way of the train. All right, everyone. Now that we came up across the next grill, yeah, this one doesn't seem to go anywhere. Those other ones may have just been collapsing off to the sides unintentionally. I do believe this was just a spot for workers to get out. This one doesn't go anywhere at all. This tunnel might be longer because this is like the middle of it. Maybe there's a third one. Here is a bunch of little twigs all stuck together with metal wire. Some sort of fencing. All right, everyone. I am seeing a lot of sheetrock in here. Do you think it fell off the train when it was still active? Because I just don't see why somebody would be bringing that in here. And it's also semi underneath the ballast. Yes, there is a third grade in here, so this is considerably a longer tunnel than before. Not collapsed at all. And you can still see a good amount of the gray galvanization. These are pretty new. So I do believe these were just put in here for people's safety. All right, everyone, I found this pretty interesting. This tunnel is almost three quarters of a mile long. It didn't look like it, but it is. I'm not quite to the end yet, but talking through this, because of the distance, there's like a 2.5 second delay in my voice. So, make a noise! One, two. Maybe not two seconds, but I do believe there's a little bit of a delay. Woo! Make a noise! I do believe there's a little bit of a delay in here because I know that under normal conditions, your voice can travel. I believe it takes five seconds per mile. So, maybe this tunnel's not as long as I think. It is supposed to be nearly 3,000 feet long. So there should rightfully be a little bit of a delay. Alright, we're coming back into the spider web zone. Lots of spider webs here towards the end. And back there, I do believe the tunnel has a dip in it. It looks like water fills up there, and that's why there was a little bit of damage to the bottom of the wall. I don't even know if I would call that damage. It's just a water line. It barely ate away, but it is proof that water sometimes does accumulate there. Now you can see all the spider webs and stuff. Look at them all. Hundreds of them all over the floor.
And as you can tell, we're in a very rural area. Not many people use this recreation trail. And understandably, I can see why. With motor vehicles not allowed here, at least this time of year, maybe it's open to snowmobiles. I'm not sure. I know in my area, they have the same sort of gates, but they open them all in the winter for snowmobiles. I don't even know if that happens here. This, you can tell, not many people come here. Here's some bird's nests on the ledges. You can see the streaks of poop coming down. I did hear a few birds from in there. And here we are coming out. And this is where I was zooming into the tunnel earlier. Should be able to see the road right down here. I'm glad I didn't have to walk through this field. Who knows what could be in that high grass. Yep, that's the roadway I was down on. Zooming on up here to this tunnel. Now I can tell when it rains, water definitely comes down here, but I guess not in the amount that it would require a culvert. To me it looks like A, the culvert either got buried, there's no evidence of a backup, it probably just comes through the hill. I imagine the hill is all made up of rock fill, so a lot of water can pass through it without causing any damage. Then it can come out here, there is no culvert at all on the road either. This is a pretty dry place, and I guess it would take a freak storm to even do that. Wow, that tunnel is a lot longer than it appeared. It was at least a third bigger than the first one. And here, this whole area feels like air conditioning pouring out. It's very nice. Now right here, they put these rocks so nobody can come into this pasture. At least they can't drive into it. Most of these pastures look abandoned like they haven't been used in years. See right here is where a vehicle probably used to be able to go through. And by the look of it, it looks like there's some kind of trail. Probably not for a truck, but maybe the farmer's ATV or something. That's usually what they use in these hilly fields. Truck is not practical and it's not maneuverable as an ATV. Oh, nice. I'm back into the air conditioning. If you look up here on the ceiling, it looks like the tunnel has a couple weep holes so water can get out from behind it. Because right here, this close to the edge, it could potentially freeze, causing damage. Inside the tunnel, I don't see any more except down near the floor. Take a look at all this eroding rock. See how it brushes off so easily? Wind, storms, freeze and thaw cycles, it's really piling up here at the bottom. And take a look at all the rocks that have fallen down here from these soft hills. A good amount of the train tunnels I have explored out east only the end caps are made of concrete. I'm noticing all these tunnels, they're concrete all the way through. Because you, when you saw me touch that wall back there, it just crumbles. They'd have so many collapses if they didn't line it with concrete like this. Just have to think about how dangerous, how dangerous it must have been making this tunnel with that unstable stone. Check out all these spider webs in this train tunnel. There's probably thousands of them here on the floor. If you look carefully, they're all flapping in the wind like little tarps. everyone here we go back down the hill and we're gonna try to find another tunnel or interesting things along the railroad I 
I just want to show everyone this pretty cool hydroelectric dam right here. Looks really nice. That is Lower Monumental Dam in Washington. All right, here we are. You can see the flat platform up there right above that house running right along the mountain. Oh, there's a massive trestle coming up. Hey, we got some fire ants here right on the edge of the road. All right, we are here about to go up to that gigantic trussel. I don't think this is it. I think this is just the railway at the moment. But we're gonna go through this culvert. Old railway culvert right here. It looks like the roadway, they didn't think it was necessary enough to have one so big. You can see they just replaced it. Brand new road, didn't even paint the line on yet. Definitely a brand new culvert. Yep. You see the railroad company at one point put these railroad ties across as baffles. And that's okay for them to use wood. These things barely flow in this kind of climate. Lots of graffiti in here, makes sense. Very accessible from the road. A lot of people who do the graffiti probably wouldn't take the time going up there. And you can see one of the graffiti artists made quite the splash on the wall. Yeah, there's, yeah, we better be careful in here. There's a lot of poops and toilet paper all over the place. People are using this as a rest area for when they're driving by. I don't know why, there's literally a rest area down the road next to the boat launch with bathrooms. Yep, there's lots and lots of human poops in here. There's the railroad trussel. So that is a completely different track. Wow, it's a totally different track. Amazing, I'm definitely gonna hike up there. I don't think I'm gonna go across it because if you look really closely, the ties are all falling apart but maybe that's just the walkway. That might not even be this part that supports the train. I can definitely see a railing that fell off. No guarantee that we're gonna go across it, but I'm definitely gonna take the hike up there. Yep, just be careful, the poop squirts all over the wall. Here's some shells. Somebody was target practicing out here. All right, let's try to make our way up to this awesome trestle. And maybe we can figure out where the railroad splits off. You can see this dried up stream bed. Really doesn't flow a lot. It's more of an animal trail. Definitely animals and people walking here are keeping it down more than the water. Here's a bunch of barrels from the railroad. This one has a cinder block inside it. All right, everyone. Somebody's definitely been doing some kind of hunting in here. Shells everywhere. All right, we're gonna make our way up this very steep, rocky hill. Gotta take it easy, it's pretty hot out right now. It's a pretty cool rock. Kinda looks like a skull. This is a really big bridge, bigger than I thought from the road. Just take a look at the size comparison to that utility pole right next to it. The bridge is in very good condition. Barely any rust on it. In fact, it looks like it's freshly painted, except for the top. So it looks like these utility poles were most likely telegraph. A lot of them are mangled. That one's broken. 
burnt to the ground by a fire. I'm starting to believe that right there was just another line, probably going to pick up from some local shipper. It's a very steep hill. I'm just thankful the grass is thin enough where I can look for snakes because I'd be wearing the big tall boots otherwise and I'd be sweating a lot. What had what made all these holes, you think? Thinking some kind of wasp and I'm hoping I don't run into it. This bridge is so much bigger than I thought it was. Here we are with all the down telegraph lines. The pole up here is completely laying down. Very steep here. Lots of loose gravel. I'm trying my best not to slip and fall down the whole hill. Wow, we finally made it up here. I took like a five minute break just to catch my breath so I wouldn't be breathing heavily. There are so many birds living in all these cubby holes here. And it looks like there's also some predators going after them. I'm pretty sure that that one right there is just a crow. But these birds here, the way they're flying, they're scared of something. And right behind me, this is pretty sad. Like I mentioned in the video, there's a lot of grassland fires here. This is why all the timbers look so mangled. This whole thing was on fire. This would be a death sentence just going across it. It's so dangerous. Some of these will definitely still support weight, but there's too many of them that are broken. You can see further out there, the ones that are kind of stood up, definitely broken, dangerous to walk across. And there's no way you could ever use the walkway. You saw before I even came up here, part of the walkway was hanging. Now I see why. See, they're railing as these cables. And those cables is all that's holding up parts of it. Like you see, the one right here is kind of swaying. But even if it wasn't burnt, this fence was here before the fire, obviously. It's burnt too. But I do think people probably could squeeze through there. It's not even locked. Take a look at that. It's not even locked. That is a shame because this probably was a great recreation tra trail if it was ever open for that. Definitely worth saving if it was ever to become some kind of biking or snowmobile, ATV trail, anything along those lines. The bridge is still structural and it'll probably be structural for hundreds of years. Remember how I mentioned that it's in perfect condition except the deck? That's why the heat of the fire is what ruined the top portion of it. Completely burned down by the grassland fire. Probably didn't take much. You hear the wind probably. The wind makes the fires gush so fast across these lands. They don't last for long, but obviously it caught this bridge on fire and it's creosote soaked. It probably kept burning and burning. I'm surprised it went out. I also wouldn't be surprised if firefighters put it out. I've seen creosote catch fire and it goes for a long time. Yeah, look at this. This whole thing is hanging there. Let's grab onto that. Oh, look at that. That's about to rip right out of there. This is what I meant to do, just show how it's... Yeah, we got some of that stuff shaking too. Yep. It's kind of sad to see. You see right here, the telegraph pole laying on its side, because this right here is the base of it. Fire got to it. You see how it didn't climb up the pole and destroy anything? I'm pretty sure the bottom of that pole was creosote covered, which is pretty flammable. So that probably, the oily creosote is probably what kept the fire burning long enough to eat through the pole. And then by the time it fell down, the fire was probably out because this grass, it catches on fire. There's not much burning material here. Fire goes out relatively quick. 
but it spreads a lot faster. Yep, this is why the whole top of the bridge looks bad from down there. It's all charred. I couldn't see the burnt from far away. I could just see a lot of the rusting. And by the looks of it, there was a lot of stuff falling that may have been from it being watered, being put out, or it could have been dripping creosote. I've seen that stuff put on so heavily, it's just dripping. You can step in it sometimes on a hot day. Let's look underneath here. All burnt. Whole bridge was on fire at some point. Right here it says 1913. Right here, there may have been a signal tower at some point. That foundation. I think I'm gonna walk down this side. Right back down to the stream. Then it's an easy ride back out to the park. Or the parking area I pulled over at. Did that bird just respond? Yeah, this thing's all burnt. Looking for a good way down. It's so nice going down now. The sun has gone away. It's nice and cloudy, unlike when I came up. And I don't have to use much energy at all. Lots of falling debris here. Most of that is the small boards, most likely coming from the walkway off to the side. This is a big hill. You can barely see that giant culvert pipe down there. This bridge is painted really nicely. How long ago do you think that was painted? Not a spot of rust on the parts where the fire wasn't. And it looks like the fire didn't even burn long enough to cause any damage down here. Cause I'm sure all this grass was on fire. Yeah, grass didn't even burn hot enough to ruin the paint. Lots of railroad spikes all over the ground. And you see these right here? They put that underneath the tie plate, underneath the rail, so it doesn't cause unnecessary vibrations on the bridge, which just cause a lot of wear and tear. I would have loved to walk across this bridge. It's all destroyed. Take a look up there. There's the walkway. The complete floor is missing. That right there is a little cubby hole to get further away from the train when it goes by. There's numerous of those. And there's the hanging piece down there. Take a look at all this cool stuff that fell down here after the fire. Most of the tie plates and stuff were thrown off when they removed the tracks. That's not a result of the fire. But these things you can see are obviously burnt. These long... Right here. I believe this fell from the fire, from the railings. Or maybe it's just singed because it was in the grass fire, but it looks like that cooked for a while and got a chance to heat up. Let's take a look. It looks so far away because the bridge is so huge. Absolute massive bridge. This bridge is in almost perfect condition. They could definitely save this for minimal cost. I don't see anything damaged on it, except needing a new paint job and a new wooden platform up there. At first I thought this thing would have been broken and swinging. No, it's just the lay of the land. And we're going to go back down here near the telegraphs as we make our way back to the road. Park boundary, no hunting. 
Yep, here's all the telegraph lines. Even though there's almost a 100% chance they're not active, I'm not going to touch them. That's the same reason you saw me touch that cable up there with the back of my hand. It's just a habit from being in the electrical trade. Wow, this is fun. Look at how dry this ground is. So dusty. That's really fun to kick around. Boom. Making big clouds here. Wait for that to settle a bit before I walk through it. Oh, we just found another beetle friend on the edge. Now it's time to go and walk back through that culvert pipe. It looks like, oh, someone else's pooping area. Now we gotta go back through this really nasty culvert of poops, unfortunately. People were so gross just going in this culvert pipe like that when there's literally a bathroom across the street about a quarter mile down. I could only understand if this was like the middle of nowhere, which it technically is, but there is a bathroom nearby. And we'll want to know why they did it inside the tunnel when they could have just done it in the bushes. Yeah, this has a better echo than those train tunnels we were in. Check it out. Right across the road, there's a beautiful campsite here. Might be a good spot to spend the night. Check it out everyone, it looks like we have another gigantic train trestle. Haven't seen any more tunnels. Curious if this one's burnt or not. This one doesn't look like it has ties over it at all. Oh, we're going under it. That's even more awesome. This one looks like it most likely burned too. Yeah, it definitely burned. It's all rusty up there. And it looks like that short line I was talking about at some point must have crossed the road because that was down, that continued down there. All right, we're gonna continue. I just turned around for a better shot of this bridge. You can see up top, there is a bunch of rust. This one looks like it completely burned. There's not a trace of any wood up there at all. Everything completely fell down. But that also makes a lot of sense. It was probably removed because they don't want all that debris that we were finding under the first bridge falling down onto the first. Or falling down onto the road. Wow, the whole guardrail's burnt. Look at that. See how all the poles are missing? They completely burned. Yeah. Just noticing that now. I didn't notice that at first. That railroad is down there to our right, the short line, I'm calling it. It probably isn't, because it's going so far. And speaking of it, look, there's another train across the river. There's a train over there. It's got a green locomotive with a BNSF locomotive trailing it. Yeah, this whole guardrail is just destroyed. That's a relatively short train for the United States. Usually. The ones we see are over a mile long. I'm about to turn up here on a road. Here it is, that came pretty fast. This is a very sharp corner, so I gotta make a really wide turn. I believe that this was that other train track. It crossed here. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad at all. Not too bad of a road. So this is that lower track that was going over that culvert pipe we had to go under to get to the first bridge. This right here must have been a train track too. So right here, is there a culvert pipe there? I'm assuming there's a culvert pipe here, I'm not sure though. 
just seems to be such a dry place they didn't put them where they would typically be to my education a lot of times they build these so rocky because you see what they got to do right here where I'm driving they have to cut it out and they got to fill in the low spots they use this rocky cut to throw in there so a lot of water can pass through it anyways there's some foundations up here to the right honestly the first place I find a turnaround I'm definitely gonna take it this is not a good place to be I'm not gonna drive any further on this you see in the distance I could drive mile after mile of this there's some kind of abandoned structure here oh perfect yes I can easily turn around I'm just gonna back up into this and I should be fine I'm gonna stop here though I want to show this abandoned building or whatever that might be all right everyone you can still see that tail end of the train it's going pretty slow that thing We're backing up right here backing up just enough so something else could potentially get by I don't think it's gonna happen all right that train is long gone you can still hear it though across the river here is a beautiful orchard or growing something beautiful farmhouse beautiful barn looks really nice basically nothing around here is green unless it's watered let's go up and see what this building is that looks pretty cool and there's the big trestle and this railroad would have continued there there's one on top of the other they're probably going to totally different spots but a train takes forever to gain elevation that's why they broke off such a long time ago but are staying together there's some bones here probably from a deer that got hit up on the roadway here's more of these holes everywhere i don't know if insects caused those or if it was birds digging i'm really not sure heading up here there's another big bone Gotta be careful, there's a lot of jagged metal here. These are really cool foundations. Oh, is that a big drop? Not too bad. Let's see if I can squeeze around this corner. Yep, I did it. Wow, we're so close to the road. Didn't even see this on the road. The fires definitely ripped through here. That doesn't look too old either. Not much of a building anymore. What do you think this building was used for? With these weird passageways. Was that for water? Let's step over here. Very carefully. That's a good 8 feet drop. See what's in here not much yep just walked back up to the road these fires did a number and there's that railroad up there this must have been one massive fire I would assume it happened last year or very early this year see that just destroyed all the poles holding up the guardrail i'm just surprised how long it's taking for the dot to fix it because obviously it's been like this for at least a better part of this year look at this this is literally a road I can see the grass pushed over 
from somebody driving up there not too long ago right through where the guardrail was or right at the end of it at least all right everyone here we go back up to the road now this unlike the rest of the railroad where it's all gated i can tell a lot of people take vehicles down here just looks a bit sketchy if someone else was to have to pass there's a gigantic cliff down one side here we are coming back up to the road pretty rocky here Looking good. Here's a road right next to it. And it said wood fires prohibited between June and October 10th. And it says you can use propane or charcoal year round. So this road is probably going to another campsite like the one I showed earlier. All right, everyone. So this looks to be the campsite. Or maybe it's down this extremely steep road that no one should ever drive down right here. It doesn't look that bad on camera, but I know my vehicle would definitely spin out. I would never get back up this. That's probably a 40% grade, maybe a little more. There's a chair down there. It's definitely a beautiful campsite, but I do not see a vehicle getting back up from there. All right, here we are coming back out of that campsite and we're gonna continue down it looks like we may not be able to meet up with the train tracks again because there's absolutely no roads near it. Yes, check it out. I've never seen anything like this, how it removed all the guardrail posts, but it did not get them all. It looks like the grass wasn't thick enough to catch a good amount of them on fire. And it doesn't look like this was super recent either. None of the grass around here is burnt. It was probably a last year's fire. Very surprised that they didn't replace it by now. All right, now we're going to a place called Snake River Junction. And that might be where these two tracks go together. It's possible. Maybe they went back together back there. We, we missed the fork. It's kind of hard to see up in these hills. Are still traveling to that next location where we can get to the tracks. Should be there before it gets dark. Look at all these beautiful fields. The one next to us looks like it was just replanted. See it turning green? Just sprouting. All right, down here, it doesn't look like there's anything else exciting. It's just a ledge as far as the eye can see. Right, right where I am now is the railroad, this flat spot. And in the other direction, it's just a ledge going up to that bridge we drove underneath. Doesn't look like there's anything else exciting here. Let's try going down to the boat ramp. See if there's anything fun down here. Looks like a good view. I see some ducks down here. This is not a parking lot. This is just a spot to turn around and back load in. Alright everyone, I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. All right, that's the end of the road.
And that's a pretty nice sunset. And it looks to be getting more and more pretty. But here's the end of it. End of the road. Beautiful sunset there on Over Turf Road here in Washington State. Going through the beautiful grasslands. There's all those power lines coming from that hydroelectric dam I showed earlier. Looks pretty pretty with the sunset. Primitive road, no warning signs. That weather vane is really cool. It's got so many bullet holes in it too. It's really pretty out right now during the sunset. Right here used to be a tiny little building. You see its basement. And right here, this is really cool. It's a weather vane, but it's also a water pump, it looks like. Let's go take a look at this. It's really awesome. So back when this thing used to work and it still had blades, it would spin and it would bring the power all the way down here. Let's see if we can figure out how that worked. That's really creepy. Look at this doll in here all torn up. So, it looks like the drive tr train to this thing is missing. Or is it? It's really cool. I, I see how this all worked, but I can't really see how the power got down here unless something's totally missing. But this looks like a really cool water pump. I don't think it was a primitive oil pump, at least. I think it had to do with water, probably for the fields. It's a cool little shack. Lots of bird poop on this thing. I just want to see what's around the other side here. This place is all really cool. So inside the back here, there's a lot of children's toys in here. There's a stroller, couch cushions. Can you hear all that loud buzzing? That's one of the loudest noises I ever heard. It's more of a shaking. Kind of sounds like a telegraph going through, but I know they're power lines. Well, the sun is set now. I'm going to take a look at this old abandoned water pump. Here's a different one. And it has a tank, too. Making my way through here. All the flattened out grass. See what's left. Wow, the color here is so cool from the sunset. Plowing through a lot of over waist high grass. I think a lot of this is technically tumbleweed. And here it's all flattened out. I'm pretty sure it's like this because a herd of deer was laying down here. Lots of deer poop. And I can smell cows. Look at this old water tank. It looks so pretty out. So there's the water pipe. Yeah, those power lines are loud today. And that looks like where the water probably came out into something, irrigation, maybe into a tank truck. This thing you can tell hasn't run in a very long time.
those blades all look seized up. There's a lot of bird poop accumulation on the bottom blades. And there's even a bird's nest up inside it. That's a really awesome contraption. That would be so nice to have something like that. Pumping water out of the ground. It's even got a ladder to get up there. This is very cool. So the wind turns that and I see there's a drive shaft with a bunch of CV joints and I think this pipe right here is just to protect it. The moving parts going into the ground and everything else is buried and hidden. I'm not going to go up there but that is the ladder going up to that old rotted out platform. Definitely nowhere to stand up there. Very pretty sunset.